when I get to read uh, Yeats's, uh, they call him in Wiki uh, Yeats, Yeats, but uh, for me it was always William Butler Yeats. When You Are Old by William Butler Yeats. When you are old and gray and full of sleep, and nodding by the fire, take down this book. And slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once, and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace, and loved your beauty with love false or true, but one man loved the pilgrim soul in you, and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little softly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. My pilgrim soul is the part inside of me that wants to see the world and to understand it in different ways and through different cultures. And it's taken me to a lot of different places. It's taken me to all of the homelands of my ancestors, to Ireland and Armenia and Greece and Germany and Switzerland. And it's, and it's given me sort of the sense of adventure that I want. I was in the Peace Corps for two years and I lived in Eastern Ukraine. And there I was able to get a true sense of myself because there were no mirrors of the regular society. We see ourselves through the lenses of our friends or our work or our neighborhoods. And here I was going to a completely foreign place and I was able to find a clarity of self that I hadn't had before. And that was a really extraordinary experience and I think it's something that encouraged me to move from a village in Ukraine to Ukrainian village here in Chicago. You get a sense of Ukraine to a certain extent living in Ukrainian village and that I love that. I love being able to walk down the street and hear people speaking Ukrainian and to get some of the foods that I miss from Ukraine. Our friends in Crimea were saying that the cities are dead. Everyone is staying home. No one is going to school or work. And that the, the Russian militia are in the Tatar neighborhoods, the, the Crimean Tatar neighborhoods. During my time in Ukraine, I lived with an older Ukrainian woman. She was in her 70s when we lived together. And she gave me a great perspective on the experience of what it was like to be both Ukrainian and Soviet and to have lived through these real periods of turmoil in history. And we lived on a farm together up the hill from the school where I was teaching. And it was extraordinary the way that we were able to interact with each other because when I first arrived, I had very little Russian and Ukrainian language skills. And so the first night I got there, the way that we communicated with each other was through song. I would sing a song on my mandolin for her, and then she would sing a war song that she sang with her veteran choir. And so that was a way for us to exchange a piece of art. Who's that guy? Can, it's, well, I don't know what the lighting situation. Okay. We'll start from the top of that. I met Billy at a lecture here in Chicago. on our first date to a bookstore. And during our first date, it was a silent writing session. So we sat down and, and wrote quietly together for two hours. And afterwards, we went and had one of those very long cups of tea. And for whatever reason, I felt compelled. This is a poem that I've known and sort of recited along in my head for a while. And I felt compelled to recite it to him. And it maybe, maybe subconsciously, it was some sort of test to see if he was willing to see what I saw in it. And I read it to him, and he sort of leaned back and said, Pilgrim Soul, that's beautiful. And I knew that he had seen mine. I ran to Canada, my head to clear. At the beach in 
thousand to forget you, dear. My grandfather told me in a letter to never stop finding beauty in art or music or poetry because that is what makes us the special creatures of God. Poetry can say so much in so few words if they're well crafted. I first encountered this poem in college during a first year seminar on Yeats. After that first semester, I went home and as you know, most young kids, I visited my family, my parents, and then my grandparents in Connecticut. <laughs> Docky, my grandfather, is this right, sort right. of larger than life character to me. And he was someone whose respect I wanted greatly. We were sitting around the dining room table, Docky and I, and for the first time we were holding court on this very erudite subject of Irish poetry. One year, your grandma Peg and I were in Ireland in Sligo, where he's buried. And I think this was the first time that we got to sit and exchange points of view as peers. And so I started telling him about the classes I was taking in this Yates seminar in particular. And then he walked off and he went to a bookshelf and pulled down this book. And it was a Yates reader. And he read it to me and, and he stands beside me and he opens to this page and he reads this poem. When you were old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love false or true. But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you, and loved the sorrow of your changing face, and bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly, how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face a crowd of stars. Wow. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to you when you read it? Your uh, mortality, and this is uh, what the uh, thing is, and uh, I happen to face it with uh, uh, joy, if you want to use the phrase. I think my affection for this poem affirms for him that some of the things he's tried to create, some of the values he's tried to instill in his family, have survived through the generations. And so our shared affection for it, I think, is gives him a great sense of solace that the hard work that he's done on this earth is is was was time well spent. <gasps> um, I'm glad that my mom was there to help with that the FaceTime stuff for Docky, because I feel like otherwise it would have been a little bit complicated. Technology is only a, a means to facilitate a message, you know? He's got right. all the substance. <laughs> so, what do you feel when I read the poem, When You Are Old? Are you going to read it first? Are you going to read it first? Well, I'll try my best here. When You Are Old, by William Butler Yeats. When you are old and gray, and full of sleep, and nodding by the fire, take down this book, and slowly read, and dream of the soft look your eyes had once, and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace, and loved your beauty with love false or true, but one man loved the pilgrim soul in you, and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. Like Shakespeare said, poetry soothes the savage beast.